Well, that'll be good. I mean, we, we got any questions today? We do have some questions today. Just so the cat's a little closer. Keep your claws in too, cat. That cat been declawed. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a little fun though, today. Always. are not supposed to be any smaller than three and a quarter inches, but not bigger than five. All those bigger lobsters that you see served sometimes at restaurants, how are they uh, caught then? You know, how are they legally kept? Thank you. Okay, the main law is three and a quarter, small ones, five inch for the large ones. The lobsters off the coast of Maine are measured from the eye socket on the back end of the eye to the back of the carapace, which is the back body. And to keep it, the small measure cannot go down over the body. And it's not an overall measurement. It's just on the carapace, which is the back. And the big ones, the jumbos we call them, is the opposite. You measure it from the eye, and the measure has to go down over before you can keep it. If it stays up on the back, he's too big. You chuck him overboard. Canada takes them over five inches and they are allowed to sell them to the states that uh, have that law. Maine doesn't do that. We leave our small ones to grow and we leave the big ones for breeders. Also, we have a, a very stringent program for the egg-bearing lobsters and that keeps our uh, industry alive and well. This is the way they've been doing it since uh, 1917, the laws went into effect. And uh, we're still abiding by them. I hope that answers your question. Hey, Leroy, this is Jacob from Indiana. So I plan on moving to Maine in the next few years, and I was wondering, well, two questions. One, do people still go out on sailing ships to go lobstering? And two, is there a minimum size for how small a boat can be for lobstering? Thank you, and I love watching your videos. They're a lot of fun. Thanks again. Bye. Okay, Jacob. The sailing ships as such is a thing of the past. They were more of a sloop than a big sailing ship. The, the coastal sailing ships, before the refrigeration in trucks and all of that, they used to transport lobsters down to maybe far as Boston. They shipped them on ice in the hold of the ship. But the ships weren't uh, designed for the shallow waters along the coast of Maine for hauling lobster traps. There's no, no uh, size that is legal or illegal in an outboard boat or a, or a small inboard boat or anything like that. You can use boat whatever you are comfortable with. You take a, a sailboat, 15 foot sailboat, they're not very steady, okay? Now you're gonna sail in around rocks if you're fishing in around the rocks. And if you don't get the sail down, and you can't stop it, it, it's impractical. It's not a practical tool to go lobster fishing in. Now, if you're out in the middle and you're going along, even then it's not practical. If you've got any headway on at all and you grab that buoy, you're going to run out of rope in a hurry. And you need either a pot hauler or you're going to haul by hand so you can get yanked right out of the boat. So it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous situation to get into. His best bet would be to learn from somebody that's done it. Most of the boys that come here from other places find a berth or a job on a regular lobster boat working in the stern. Then they get the feel of what goes on, how fast and furious it goes, what's expected of you. You have to, you have to learn how to tie knots, when to tie a knot, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty fast paced, but you learn a lot. And 
I will tell you right now, it's rugged work. You want to be physically fit. You can buy a recreation license when you first come to Maine, and that allows you to fish four or five traps. And that's a good way to start to see if this is what you really want to do. Yeah, that's the torch. Folks, and some of the noise you hear on the film is the stone quarry that's over across the channel here. They're still cutting granite over here, and they've been taking stone off that island for 75, 80 years or more. A long time. Because years ago, they dynamited everything. So they would set a charge and shake the island over here. I mean, some of them old fellas are, ah, he wants a, he wants a charge, I'll give him a charge. Put in two extra stick to hell with them. And they blow half the mountain off, you know? <laughs> but what it did, it cracked the stone. So now the stone's no good. It could be 10 feet square and they cracked it. So what they did, they used to have railroad tracks go right out to the end of those piles. And they'd put it on a dump cart and they'd take the train and they'd take it out there, dump it. And they called them grout banks. And uh, it, you see all these islands has got all these piles of stone. But a lot of the stone was good, but they destroyed it. That's why they used the torch and the wire saw. Very, very little stone gets destroyed that way. Hi, Leroy. My name is Anne Marie, and I'm calling from Chicopee, Massachusetts. I'm wondering how the price of lobster is determined. Why does it fluctuate so much? Thanks so much. Have a great day. Okay, the lobster price is mostly determined by supply and demand. Now, this last year, the on account of the pandemic, there wasn't any demand, basically, across the country. Very few places had demand for lobster. And that in turn, drop the price. A lot of the, the price of the lobsters is determined by the weather. Now the Canadian fisheries start in December and go to June. So right now, for the most part, there's plenty of Canadian lobsters. So, and they're hard shell, they don't fish in the summer. So they, when they catch their lobsters, they ship them, if they can find the market. So now that things has opened up, the market will be good, and the demand is there, so the price will go up. When the demand is off, price will go down. And basically, pretty much same with everything. Every commodity is in the fish markets and all of that. Same, same thing. I hope that answers the question. Call them in, email us either way, Ask your question, and we will do our best to answer it the best we can for you. We're at the Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries in Stonington, Maine. This is where I'm at. This is where I work. It's been a pleasure to answer your questions. It's wonderful questions have come in. We appreciate it. Keep them coming.